Well, our rights begin when our lives begin. But what kind of rights begin sometimes is dependent on existence and sometimes is dependent on ability. So your right to life isn't something I give you because then that means I could maybe take it away. A right to life is recognized by virtue of our existence. But the right to drive or the right to vote is going to be based more on, let's say, an ability, right? So a two-year-old doesn't have the conscious ability to vote. Uh, she's not going to get the right to vote. A five-year-old can't drive, so we're, you know, the ability to do it, we're not going to give her or him the right to drive. But the right to life is a different kind of right, which begins when we exist. So then, when do we exist? Well, embryology textbooks teach us that uh, life begins at fertilization. And let me convey that point for a minute by not talking about our own species. Perhaps you've had a dog. I had a dog named Scotty, a little Scottish terrier. And if I was to ask myself, well, when did my dog come into existence, no one's going to dispute that the reproduction of a canine involves the sperm from a male dog and an egg from a female dog coming together. And anyone's dog first began at fertilization. And after fertilization, the only thing which changed is that the dog got bigger and more developed and more mature and eventually developed the ability to bark that it didn't have in the womb. But it's still a dog. So in the same way, our species reproduces in a similar manner where the male sperm with 23 chromosomes fertilizing the female uh, egg of 23 chromosomes, uh, forming a whole human being at fertilization. None of us can claim ever having once been a sperm, but all of us can claim having once been an embryo, fetus, infant, toddler, teenager, and adult. So those are stages of development which begin uh, when our biological genetic identity comes into existence at fertilization. So I'm going to take it that CPR is against Plan B? In terms of Plan B, the morning after pill, uh, any chemical which prevents implantation would fall under our mandate uh, of opposing actions which, which kill innocent human beings. So because Plan B in the medical literature is described as having an anti-implantation effect, thinning the uterine lining instead of its normal thickness uh, to make it hospitable for a child, by thinning it, it makes it inhospitable for implantation. And because of everything I said about fertilization, occurs in the fallopian tube, when that human being moves to implant in the uterus, she may not be able to, could bleed out in an early abortion and therefore would fall under our mandate. Yes. And, okay. We'll take one more follow-up and then just for others, we'll take another question from someone else in the crowd. I'm going to go off what he said and say that even though you'd like to make it illegal, it doesn't really change what people will do in the event. So my position on abortion is that whether we have the law or whether we don't, it it doesn't it kind of, it more affects of the safety of the abortion rather than if it's going to happen or not because people are when it wasn't legal or when it was condemned by Catholics we'll say they had backyard or I don't want to say alley abortions where they would have some sketchy doctor come out and perform an abortion so wouldn't you rather have those people in hospitals more than you know on the street. So, uh, when you talk about illegal abortion being safer, safer for who? The woman. But is it safer for the child? Hello? Good. Right. So whether abortion is legal or illegal, it's killing a human being. So can we make it legal to kill human beings so that it's safer for those involved in the killing? Rape brings consequences for rapists. Maybe their faces will be scratched up. Maybe they will be punched in the head. Maybe if rapists rape enough women, they will get a whole bunch of STDs. Should we make rape legal and provide rape rooms for men to freely rape women with condoms and all this other stuff to ensure they, and tie the women's hands down so she can't scratch his face, to ensure that they may remain safe in the process of inflicting harm on an innocent human being? We wouldn't. And so in the same way, while I'm not saying the intentions of people involved in these parallels are the same, what I'm saying is the victimization is the same. We can't legalize killing a pre-born human being simply because there's going to be negative effects that come for those involved in that killing. And I just add with that, if you think about what the law says about drinking and driving today or about lynching today, it does happen still. People still drink and drive. But the number of people who do drink and drive has dropped dramatically because the law changing as we does reduce the number of
incidences of those five activities are going down. I'm not a female, so like I have no idea what it would be like to have something living inside of me. But in my opinion, there should be a certain point where if the like a 13-year-old girl was raped and the baby has a very high chance of killing her and killing her and the baby itself, then at that point I say it will be viable for an abortion to happen. But like I'm not I'm not all for abortion just because the baby is coming at like a time where there's financial crisis or something. I don't believe that's right. But if if there's a point where the fetus would harm not even harm, but most likely kill both of them, I'd say abortion would be okay then. Okay, so in matters of convenience, you say it wouldn't be okay because, Jojo, because? Because, in the matter of convenience, it's because if, you, if you're at an age where you can um, bear a child, right, and if you just, if you get pregnant but you don't want baby because you are going to college or you don't feel like you can provide for it, I think that's wrong. But why? Why? Because I value life in general, not who's, only human life. Whose life? The in life of the fetus, the human to be. Human to be. Mm -hmm. If it's not, if it's a human to be, what is it? What is it right now as a fetus? It's a fetus. What do you know? What the word fetus means? Not exactly. It's a Latin term for young one. So the analogy would be: these are my finger bones or my phalanges, uh, but whatever you call them, it means the same thing. So fetus, the Latin term for young one, is really an age classification from the point of the end of eight weeks to the point of birth. So early in pregnancy, it's actually not called a fetus, it's called an embryo, at which point then it's called uh, a fetus at the end of eight weeks. I only say that to make the point that we're dealing with a, a change in age over time, not a change in identity. So it doesn't turn into a human, it turns into an older human. If it has human parents in the embryonic zygote stage, it is of the human species. So if, if we we are opposed generally to abortion for convenience sake because it kills a human being, then we have to ask when is it ever okay to directly and intentionally kill an innocent human being. Now in terms of, of the woman's being li life being in danger, in that situation we don't act to kill the child, we act to address whatever the medical problem is, trying to preserve the life of the mother and the child. So, so we don't do this, we say okay what is the medical problem and how can I address the problem, maybe it's an ectopic pregnancy and address the part of the woman's body which has the pathology but not actually directly kill, kill the baby. I think we have another question. Jojo, move somewhere. Oh, no. Raise your hand if you have a question or a comment. We certainly love to hear from you whether you agree or disagree. Uh, we want healthy debate. So, question or comment. Let's go back to the right question. You seem to escape ambiguously. You said that there, you can't really give it a right because it's just ordained to be a life and there shouldn't really be questioning about that. Can you expand? Sure. Why is it wrong to kill you? Um, it's only wrong because people think that it's ethically wrong. And I guess that would have to originate in what their morals were. So it's wrong because they think it's wrong. So if I think it's okay to kill you, may I kill you? I wouldn't like it, but it would be a disagreement in morals. But hey, then if again, I you think it's justify. okay to kill the man next to you, are you going to stop me? Or are you going to say, you know what, those are her morals and I'm just not going to intervene on her morals? I would try and stop you. Why? Because as my political helper over here, I like it. <laughs> so you only save people you know and like? She asked what about her. I mean, obviously it would be less of a thing, but killing a human being that's fully developed is obviously a different story. Why does... Well, are you fully developed? <laughs> I didn't mean that in a derogatory well, well, way. Well, that was good. That was good. I, I totally did. But, <laughs> Is anyone fully developed? Yeah, that's my point. Is anyone fully developed? Let's go back to the right thing. We seem to be escaping from this and going to development. When well, no, you went, you went to development. Okay. You're the one that it's, said... Whose ever fault it is, it happened. Let's just say that... Can I kill you because of it? 